hello my friends welcome back to my channel today we are going to be doing a video all about my old favorites now i was going to film a july favorites today but i realized that all the products that i've been loving throughout the month are products that i've been talking about probably in every single video over the month so i just didn't want it to be a super redundant video so instead of talking about those favorites i decided to bring it back slightly more old school and talk about some old favorites that haven't really gotten a lot of love lately that i've kind of forgotten about i wanted to bring them back onto my channel give them some love some love that they deserve i would say most of these still very much so hold their charm and they still do hold hold the place of, of a favorite product. Let me know some of your old favorite products that maybe you started to take back out from your collection and started to play with again. I would love to hear them down below. And also let me know all of your thoughts on all the products that I'm using today. Give us a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you want to join the fam. All right, so if you wanna see how I got this look and all of my old favorites in action, great into it. So we're going to start off everything with the skin. I'm going to go in with my primer. This is my Hourglass number 28 primer serum. I don't even know why I stopped using this primer. This is probably one of the best primers for dry skin, especially if you have textured dry skin. This is honestly kind of a miracle worker. It's, it's a thick serum like texture that is very, very moisturizing, but because it has this very thick texture to it, it glides over any texture on your skin and it just provides the smoothest, the smoothest, oh my God, what? The smoothest, silkiest, and also very, very hydrating base for your foundation to sit on. It's pretty much like a face oil, but on steroids. So it's really fantastic. I really used to use this all the time, especially in the winter time. This is also kind of a lifesaver for more matte and full coverage foundations. It just allows those heavier foundations to sit better on a drier skin type. If you do have oily skin, I would probably stay far, far away from this. You're not gonna like it, but if you have normal to dry or even combo, this is fantastic Okay, I could not do this video without mentioning the it cosmetics CC cream This is such an OG for me at a certain point on my channel It was kind of one of the only foundation products that I would mention I feel like at, at a certain point I was just kind of known for this product because I would use it so much What I really love so much about the CC cream is that it's very natural looking But even though it is a CC cream it actually still has really really good coverage like close to like a medium or even a full depending on how you build it up but it's just always going to look fresh on the skin it's a very hydrating foundation that's never going to look cakey or heavy so it's just so good for every day and it just hasn't gotten a lot of love so i'm really excited to put this on my face today because i feel like it's been quite a while um so i'm going to be using the shade medium today because I am a little bit more on the tan side um, and a little bit of this stuff really does go a long way so I only put about a pump and a half I'm going to zoom you guys in so you could really see I am in daylight today so you're going to get a pretty good representation of what my skin is looking like in real life and just look how fresh that looks it's really the best way to describe this product I really need to pull this foundation back out it's not fair that I I'm keeping it locked up in my <laughs> in my makeup collection. Okay, so now moving on to concealer. I don't know why I feel so excited about this, but I'm going to use my Bare Minerals Bare Skin Complete Coverage Serum Concealer. For me, I feel like this was the OG hydrating concealer love of my life. I discovered this, and this was probably the first concealer that I used that I was like, wow, this is actually making my under eyes look hydrated and slightly moist, which I really love, and it's not making them look extra dry or crepey or not nice. Similar to the It Cosmetics CC Cream, I just have found other products that are very similar in formula that are also very hydrating and look really good underneath my eyes that I just, you know, used over this guy because they were new and exciting. <laughs> and this was old and not maybe as exciting which is a horrible thing because obviously it's still a wonderful makeup product so we are going to be using this today again i'm very very excited to pop this on so i'm going to just put a little bit right directly underneath my eyes in the little socket area and then right in the inner corner the texture of this concealer really is so beautiful it really does feel like a serum like it kind of has a slightly very slightly oily texture to it but not oily in a way where it's gonna you know like break down your makeup or anything but just enough that it just makes your under eyes look fantastic, especially if you have dry skin. I also really like the coverage of this concealer, especially for every day. It's not so full coverage where it's going to completely blank out your under eyes or anything like that. So it does stay very, very wearable. Um, it does have a little bit of translucency to it where you do see your natural skin and your natural texture 
through, which is definitely not a bad thing because it still brightens up the under eye and it still does the trick, but it still just looks really soft. It's not like a stark, intense concealer. So as you could probably tell, it's a little bit light for me because I am on the tanner side right now. So I'm gonna take another light concealer that I used to love and use all the time. I kind of use it to brighten up some areas on my face. This is the one and only L'Oreal Magic Lumi Highlighter. I feel like there was a certain point in like old school beauty guru YouTube where every single person would use this product. This was always very famously compared to the YSL Touche Eclat highlighting pen. So this isn't really necessarily supposed to be a concealer, but this is instead supposed to be more so a brightener. So it's just supposed to add a little bit of lightness and brightness to wherever you put this on your face. It's not necessarily supposed to conceal or correct. So I always like to use this as kind of like my highlighting pen throughout my face because it didn't really have coverage to it so it wouldn't add any heaviness to my face but it would still add that light which is what I was looking for. I am going to use the shade 862 oh and by the way for the Bare Minerals one I used the shade Fair when I probably should have used light honestly and I'm just going to use a little applicator just to draw this a couple areas on my face. This product combination is truly a plus 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 chef's kiss all around. Moving on now to powder. Oh my God, I have not touched this powder in such a long time. I was actually watching one of my old videos the other day because I was doing some like product research for a new video that I was doing and often I'll go back, watch my old videos, kind of see what I spoke about. And in that video, I mentioned the Armani Luminous Silk Compact. And I was like, oh my God, why have I not used this product in so long? So this is one of those powders that will not make your skin look dry, but will instead just kind of leave a nice airbrush filter on your face. At least from what I remember, we're gonna see today. I have not used this probably in like two years. So we'll see. This is in the shade 4.5, by the way. So I think I'm gonna use this to set, hmm, kind of just like over here, I guess on my nose and underneath my eyes. Just using a very small amount of the powder. That's what the powder looks like. It doesn't look heavy at all. It's not quite as like smoothing and airbrushing as I remember it. I definitely have other powders now that I feel like do a bit of a better job at that. But I mean, at the time this was holy girl status for me. I was so obsessed with it. So I guess that just shows that obviously as time goes on, you're gonna find products that just work better for you. But I mean, it's still definitely fine and good. It's just not anything crazy, mind blowing. For my bronzer and contour, I'm gonna go into my RCMA, what are you called? This is the Highlight and Contour Palette in Light. The RCMA creams were such a holy grail of mine, especially when I was a working makeup artist. I used like these palettes all the time and I also had an RCMA foundation palette that I would use on a lot of my clients. And I always just felt that their creams were really great and easy to work with. So I am going to use the contour palette today and I think I'm going to mix these two darker shades over here together to create my bronzer shade. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna take my sponge I'm just gonna go back and forth between them and use this to contour slash bronze my face. Hopefully this little color combo is gonna work with my skin tone right now. This little palette was such a holy grail of mine specifically for this color right here. This is the perfect contour color. It's just cool tone enough that it mimics a shadow, but it's not too gray where it just looks off on the skin. I feel like over the last year or so, I've kind of strayed away from a lot of my contour powders. Um, and I typically just go in with just bronzing powders to sculpt my face. But every time I go back into a contour powder or a contour cream, I always question my ways because it really just makes such a big difference. The creams though are quite kind of like sheer and easy to build up. So that actually looks really nice. I do quite like that. All right, for the blush, we're gonna be dipping into the Tarte Amazonian Clay 12 Hour Blush in the shade Risqué. This is a really pretty neutral blush with a bit of like a pinkier undertone. Um, I was obsessed with this at one point. I remember I used to talk about it all the time. It's quite a soft blush. It really doesn't have a super intense color to it, but it's very, very warm. It's really pretty. It is definitely a very wearable blush. So I believe that this is probably the very first cream highlighter that I ever purchased. This is MAC 
cream color base in the shade Shell. I actually remember buying this product and not fully understanding how cream makeup worked on the face, um, but I bought it anyway, and this became one of my favorite highlighters. It's actually quite a beautiful highlighter. It's very reflective, but still more on the natural side. And it really just makes your cheeks pop. Look at that. It's so intense. And it has a really nice, very, very, very soft pink undertone. It's kind of like a champagne pink. It's so pretty. Okay, I need to get a fresh one of these because this one may even be, or probably is honestly expired. I mean, there's no mold on here. It smells totally fine, but I've had this in my collection for a really long time. So I think I probably could just get a refresh this, but it's so freaking beautiful. I even want to see if they have more shades. <gasps> Love this. All right, it is now time to do the eyes. I am going to be using my one and only Urban Decay Born to Run palette. This is still probably one of my all time favorite eyeshadow palettes. There's so many reasons why I like this. I think that this is such a well rounded palette that kind of has a little bit of everything. You have your great basic neutrals, you also have some really fun colors in here like these raspberries blues, greens. A couple years ago, I even used this palette for my full face of makeup, even for my foundation. Like I literally created a foundation shade <laughs> out of this palette, which was kind of crazy. So I will link that video down below if you want to check it out. It's from, again, a couple years ago, but um, it just kind of shows how versatile this palette actually is. So I'm going to start off this look by mixing Weekender with Still Shot the kind of nude color and the peachy color just to create a transition shade. And I'm just going to sweep that above the crease. I already put a little bit of concealer on my lids, just enough to prep them for the shadow. Okay, now I'm gonna go into the shade Riff, which is the mid-tone matte brown up here. It's a really nice warm brown. And on a more precise blending brush, it's my MAC 217S. I'm gonna just put that in the crease and blend it out. Okay, I'm gonna go into Punk, which is probably my favorite color from this palette. It's a gorgeous, um, really, really deep, purpley brown color. I'm gonna pack this on the outer corner of my eye, kind of in like a wing shape. And then I'm blending whatever's left over on my brush, just lightly into the crease. For my lid shade, I'm going to go into um, Good Is Gone which is this cool toned metallic brown, another one of my favorites in this palette. I'm actually gonna apply this with my finger. Just pack it on the rest of the lid. So to go in with a pop on the lid, I'm gonna go in with another old favorite. This is my Stila Magnificent Metals um, Glitter and Glow Liquid Eyeshadow in the shade Kitten Karma. When these Stila Liquid Eyeshadows came out, it was like glitter was reinvented because it just made glitter application so much easier. You didn't need to use a specific primer or specific glue in order to get the glitter to stick and stay on your lid. These are so great because they're pretty much just an all-in-one product. Um, you can either just swipe them all over your lid or you can do what I'm doing and that's putting it on the back of the hand and then picking up with your finger or with a brush and then putting it on your lid that way for more of like a scattered effect. Look how stunning that is. Ken Karma, still a beautiful shade. I'm even gonna put a little bit kind of like into my crease right here. I always like that look. I am feeling kind of a smoky look today, so I'm gonna go back into Punk on a little shader brush and just sweep that underneath my lower lashes. Make sure to connect it on the outer corner. For the inner corner of my eye, I'm gonna go in with my Laura Mercier Caviar Stick Eye Color in the shade Rose Gold. I used to use these Laura Mercier Caviar Sticks so often, especially the lighter shades, because I always felt like they really made the inner corner pop, which they do, um, and they just last a really long time because they are creams that set down. So I'm just gonna pop that right on that inner corner and look how reflective that is. It's so beautiful. You know how sometimes your inner corner highlight could just disappear really quickly? I always found whenever I would use these creams, they would really stay in place the entire day and they would stay nice and bright. For my mascara, I'm gonna go in with my Benefit Roller Lash. This was probably my go-to favorite mascara before I discovered the Hourglass Caution. I haven't used this in so long, but from what I remember, it's a really great curling mascara. Um, excuse me? I get very stubborn with my mascara and I kind of always stick with the same thing because when I, when I find something that I really love, it's pretty much like the only thing that I use. So as of late, I've kind of just been circling between the new Hourglass Mascara, the Hourglass Caution, and then the Elia Limitless. I totally forgot how good this product was. 
it's doing just a really good job of literally curling my lashes. Like it's making my lashes go straight up or rather like curled up. And it's also separating them, lengthening them and volumizing them. It's literally doing everything. Like, holy shit, before, after? That's uh, quite impressive. Fully forgot how amazing this mascara is. This is going back in my everyday vanity. Wow. So for my brows, I'm gonna go in with my Anastasia Dip Brow in Ash Brown, another old favorite of mine. Um, the Dip Brow is very good if you want a very long wearing brow that will literally not move off of your face, but you do need to be careful with it. It is kind of a tricky product to use. Um, the trick is really to use as little product as possible because otherwise you're gonna get a very, very blocky, intense brow. So you wanna take an angle brush, pick up some of the product from the tub, and then what I like to do is I like to kind of smush the product into the brush in the cap and also remove some of the excess. And then use that to gently, very gently, do small hair-like strokes throughout your brow. And you're gonna get something that's nice and soft. But again, that's gonna last you throughout the entire day. That's what's so good about this product. Dip brow is also really great if you don't have a lot of brow to begin with and you wanna create more of a fuller shape because a lot of brow products really depend on sticking to brow hair. So if there's no actual brow hair there and you're just trying to create a shape from just on, on your skin and then you need something that's really gonna set down and this will be your guy. Here you go. See, you can still create a really, really natural looking brow with this. Okay, for my brow gel, I'm gonna use my Benefit Gimme Brow a Classic. This is a great volumizing brow gel. Put the majority of whatever product is on the spoolie towards like the, the last three quarters of my brow. And then whatever is left over, I'll put it towards the front just so that I don't over apply. And then I get a perfect, perfect brow look. Okay, so time to finish off this look with the lips. So I'm gonna start off with an old favorite lip liner. This is my Makeup Forever. Aqua Lip in the shade 3C. The Makeup Forever Aqua Lips are very, very long wearing. It's called Aqua Lips because it is supposed to be more of a waterproof formula. Um, and I also just loved how creamy it was. And the shade, of course, was always perfect for me. So I'm gonna just line my entire lip with this. So for the lipstick, this is such a throwback for me. This is the Bite Beauty lipstick in the shade Leche. This is just pretty much like a pinky, pinky nude. It's a really great, comfortable matte formula. It's very creamy, so it doesn't feel drying at all. The color is actually very pretty. For the gloss, Fox and White Russian Baby, of course, classic. It's actually a really nice new lip combo. <laughs> All right guys, that is it for the finished look. I'm actually very happy that I did this video. I think I always need a little reminder of some old products that I used to love. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. Let me know all of your thoughts down below on the products that I used today, on the look that I created. And let me know also some of your old school favorites that you've been loving lately. So give this video a big thumbs up if you did enjoy it and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.